something a little bit different. Uh, first of all, we head back to Australia. Um, but instead of engines, we uh, trade them for human power. So I'm going to be talking about the Australian International Pedal Prix or the UniSA Australian HPV Super Series, uh, which I actually have the privilege of commentating um, this season. Um, just had my second round doing so. This is round three. What an incredible event. Three days of action in Victoria Park, which is where the Adelaide 500 is held uh, regularly. Yeah. Um, it's such a fantastic uh, event, great for kids, great for um, cyclists, and great for anyone who enjoys action. We had a massive crowd, actually, because um, one unique thing about this event this weekend is called the Festival of Pedal Free. So normally we have uh, our six, it's like an endurance series for bikes, pretty much, recumbent trikes. Um, this was a six-hour event, and what we did, instead of having uh, all the classes together, like we saw with the Le Mans, and they race together. Yes. We actually decided to split them up, um, which is why we call it the festival, because Friday we have um, the juniors basically racing each other. Um, Saturday we had the pros um, of, the, of the groups in there. And then Sunday we had the remaining schools, so the seniors and middle schools. Um, and we had a whopping roughly 228 bikes all together. That's incredible. Um, which is fantastic. And actually the next event, because we go back to the tail and bend um, yes. for the eight hour. We've, at, this, at this stage, we've got 222 entries that one that's amazing so it's fantastic and that's when they will be racing together and of course it all leads up to the famous 24 hour at murray bridge um in september as well 24 hours 24 hours it's insane that's incredible <laughs> and obviously they do it as a team right all that in saying that we actually today this weekend we actually had a solo rider wow in six hour and uh, his name is luke wilson now he did it last year um for king's baptist college um he actually did a six hour on his own. I think that was his first. I can't be, can't remember, but uh, he definitely did this one today. And uh, he did double the amount of racing he did compared to last year. Um, Cause the way that works is as long as you start and finish, yep. um, you still pit like normal. Obviously you just rest in there. Um, Cause I, I, kept, I caught up with him midway through the race and he was pretty knackered. Oh, I can imagine. Um, it was, and the Saturday race was actually seven hours instead of six. It was quite unique. And, he did so well. I was speaking to, I believe, his dad. Um, and just, it was massive because it's a massive team to bring it all together. Of to course. That one rider. Uh, and it's such a special achievement. And he actually, his dad actually told me that he wants to maybe do all the six hour races, but also the 24 on his own. Okay. Which wow. Is insane. Uh, I mean, yeah, the preparation for that and, oh. you know, uh, health first, you know, just, exactly. you, know, you know, it's uh, an incredible, but we've seen, you know, we've seen uh, the Daytona 24 hour mm -hmm. iRacing event uh, on a simulator yeah. run on his own and he won. <laughs> he won the <laughs> he whole won, thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, no, it's, it's such a small world, you know, because one of my clients, uh, his son, you know, in the crypto world, um, his son actually runs in it as well. So shout out to George and, and the family, you know, they go there and support. Uh, and, and I think it's fantastic, you know, these, these sort of things and, you know, get everybody together. And it's always amazing, you know, to see family come together for these and support their kids. So brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. And we actually had Dean Canto. Uh, race. Uh, his son was racing as well. So oh, there you go. There you go. Just small world um in in the world but uh fan, it, it was a fantastic turnout um saturday friday was very very wet uh we actually had to red flag the race at one point due to standing water but we got underway and once we got underway it was like, it was pretty good uh, it was fantastic the rain came and went but uh really and then the sun the sun the sun came out at the very end of the race of course it did yeah saturday was a bit windy uh but the rain stayed away for that one and then sunday was just absolutely beautiful sun was out very little it was a great day we had a massive turnout. It was fantastic to see everyone um, alongside the fence uh, had their own seats, marquees up. It's such a fantastic venue. Um, and we go there every year. And it, I race. I had the the honor to race there for, uh, for six years or five years, sorry, um, in the series with my school, Endeavour College, uh, who actually raced this weekend as well. So I caught up with some old faces, which was great. But uh, I always loved coming to Victoria Park. Yes. Um, because they use that track for their training, their test sessions throughout the year. 
Um, and it's such a fantastic track. It's not too hard on them compared to the bend where there's so much incline. Um, it's rather flat and rather forgiving, but uh, still, it's fantastic. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, speaking of uh, Victoria Park, you know, we do hope a little bit later in the year to see, you know, Let's Talk Motorsport uh, um, have an involvement, you know, with the Adelaide 500 uh, coming up. And, you know, who knows, you know, maybe with um, with Slipstream, we, we may... Uh, we hope, you know, to have some drivers uh, participate um, in what categories yet we 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 can't mention, but uh, that should be that should be interesting. Stay tuned. Stay uh, tuned. Go actually in saying that cheeky plug. Go follow our socials while you're at it to stay up to date with all that stuff and whatnot. Just head to Slipstream Motorsports. You can head there on the Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook, and YouTube. And the same here for Let's Talk Motorsport. You can also check that out on socials as well. So stay tuned for that. But uh, it's always fantastic venue the adelaide 500 but, absolutely um back to pedal pre uh, i'm going to run through the results the winners for each class so there's rough there's exact there's a total of seven um categories or classes mm. so starting off with the c7s which is the pros like i said um aurora racing managed to win that one two laps clear of waddle that was a crazy battle um so it, for those who didn't get to a go like ivan here for example um it was a uh, a cracking race for the first probably couple of hours. We saw a Waddle v Aurora. Um, there were literally 0. Uh, 0.5 or 0. 0.2. That was the gap. They were neck and neck the whole entire stint. Wow. Uh, and then it sort of went to Waddle's favor there. They actually ended up being two laps in the lead. And now Ivan's probably wondering what the heck happened. Well, um, what, what happened? How did we get two laps in there? context, Waddle has won Mount Gambier, which is round one, has won in Tail and Bend. So they've been the ones to beat. Okay. Um, they do have the number one on their bike um, for a reason. And unfortunately, they actually got a flat blowout, a rear puncture. Um, oh. And unfortunately, they went from two laps leading to two laps down, just like that. And that and that was all happened in the last hour of the seven-hour race. So wow. Just shows the endurance side of things. And uh, so we saw a quite a, a tight battle um, for a while there for actually P2 and P3, which was Team Uni SA's Evo and Waddle. Um, and during that time, like we saw some blinders, um, for lap time wise, like because they had nothing to lose Waddle, um, they already lost the lead. They're already two laps down. They just pitted at last probably half hour, just went for it, put in their best rider. Um, shout out to, uh, I think Reese, um, that's his name there. My God, he got a 118.1, uh, and an average of 62.2 Ks an hour. Wow. Uh, and in these bikes is amazing. It's sensational. Like we have compared to like a comparison, the second fastest was a 58.5, I think, K an hour wow. average. So that is a bit of a comparison there. It was insane. And, and it just shows they, like, they live and breathe this sport. Yes. Um, and they put so much development in these trikes as well. They've come a long way since I've raced there six years ago. Completely professional. Oh, it's fantastic. And um, if you guys want to check it out, um, Team Uni SA actually do like a, a doco series called Evo Access on YouTube. Um, where they show all that stuff. And it's like, it gives a good insight into how a pro team operates. Yeah, wow. All right. So let's move on to the other categories while we're at it. So C6 uh, saw Trump development team from Trump Trikes Factory Racing claim the win for that one. Uh, and then C5 category, we saw Visper from Wimra HPV Racing Club. Um, now, unfortunately, I said Wimmeria um, or something like that. I can't even remember <laughs> what I said. And they actually pointed that out. Uh, we had a little bit of a laugh. It's a fantastic team. Um, so I'm glad that they managed to win that one. It was so great to see. C4, we saw uh, SA Great Pembroke uh, from Pembroke School won that one. And they actually claimed the win for the next two categories with uh, S3 Centurion. Um, they're basically the waddle racing of the school categories. Yes. They have clean sweep the year so far. And they actually won with about six or eight laps in the lead. So they have been dominating so far. S2, we saw Phoenix from Pembroke win that one. And S1, this was a really cool battle. This is the junior um, schools. Uh, we saw Comet, Comet, Crafer's Primary School win against uh, Highgate Hot Rod from Highgate School, which actually it was looking like it was going to be Highgate Hot Rod that was going to be winning. Uh, it was a really close battle between them, but uh, Comet. Comet, I can't even say the word right. Yeah. <laughs> Crafers, let's just stick with Crafers, uh, claimed the win for that one. So it was fantastic to see all the kids so ecstatic, so happy and enthusiastic. It's such a fantastic um, vibe as well. The atmosphere is sensational. 
That's why I love going there. And the Murray Bridge one for 24 hours is just times that up by a thousand. Yeah. It's so, so good. And uh, you've had, you've competed in like eye racing endurance races. And yeah, so yeah, forth. yeah, absolutely. Um, and so you know how the endurance side of things, teamwork and stuff like that works. Yeah. I mean, I didn't, uh, I didn't get into endurance racing until a couple of years ago, uh, when I started with the, um, Excels and, and then, um, uh, with the Renault Clio, I did the Malala 12 hour, then I did the Thailand Ben four hour race. And yeah, I just I overlooked endurance racing because being, um, I guess a athlete, semi-professional, <laughs> call it athlete, but I think what's really fascinating is that you always think about, you know, your own individual performance and you don't want to be in a team environment where say, for example, the teammates not, may not be as fast as you, right? Mm. But endurance racing just takes a, that all out the window. You know, you got to look after your vehicle. It's going to last the whole way. You can't push the whole way. You need to be constantly talking to each other and, and coming up with random strategies at the end. I mean, I remember the four hour race at tail and bend, um, we had it in the bag. And I don't know where the teammate comes into the pits, which we did not expect. <laughs> we didn't even have our race suits ready, yeah. um, but he fell sick in the car. Oh, no. And so, like, quickly someone had to jump in, yeah. you know? So, um, yeah, you just you just never know with endurance racing, and it's not over until it's over. Exactly. And I we might not have been competitive, but when I, with my school, I competed in the Murray Bridge event, and uh, it, it, it was so cool. I seriously missed that. Um, till, especially till this day. Yes, I'm part of the sport now as a commentator. I really miss that riding and team dynamic. It's so, yes. you, you can never beat it. It's so so sensational. It's hard to explain until yes. you're there. Absolutely. But like nothing beats getting up at 2 a.m. and you got like a, a skeleton crew yep. um, and you're just working it out as a team together, sitting by the heater and planning out your race. It's, it's, it's really fun. Absolutely. And, I mean, right now I know that I'm still not ready to quit because whenever I go to the track and I'm not racing, I hate it. I just, I hate it. I hate it. I do miss I, riding, but I'm in I, no condition. To miss <laughs> but now, now. that's fantastic. But uh, the next event will be in August 3rd. So a bit of a wait now, six weeks or so. Um, we go back to tail and bend for round four. Fantastic. Um, the West circuit. Uh, which Love is, the West circuit. It's so fun. I love it in a car, um, in a bike. It might be a bit tougher. Yeah, but uh, now looking forward to it. I'll see you all there. Everyone going, like I said, 222 bikes at the moment. Here's to see if Aurora can uh, maintain that lead uh, or can Waddle steal it from them once again, or maybe Team UniSA. They're still yet to win as a team. Of course, it's their second season competing. So let's see what happens. Fantastic. But uh, on that note, let's uh, wrap up the show. Um, thanks everyone who has tuned in today. If you haven't seen the whole thing, you can actually go over to our Spotify. Let's talk motorsport to check out the full episode there as well. Uh, this will also be uploaded to YouTube in segments. Uh, thanks, Ivan, for joining me once again, mate. Always, always a pleasure. pleasure. Always a pleasure having you on board. And uh, in a couple of weeks' time, you'll be uh, putting on your helmet once again, won't you? I will. I will. We'll talk about. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about it uh, next week. Uh, we're heading to Queensland Raceway, and uh, I hope to be yeah to bring you a couple of updates uh, leading up to it. But very much looking forward to it. No RX8 has raced at Queensland Raceway, so it's an even playing field for everybody. Um, there have been one or two teams that have tested already there, but apart, but the majority of us, uh, it'll be our first time. So very looking forward to it. Very exciting. But uh, so stay tuned for that and tune in to next week as well as we preview the uh, Formula RX8 series. But uh, if you're wondering where we can catch us, just go to Let's Talk Motorsport or Slipstream Motorsports on our social medias. We're usually everywhere. Um, as well as Slipstream, you can find us TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, even as well, YouTube as well. Don't forget to su subscribe to both our both of us. And uh, yeah, thanks everyone who's tuned in for some more motorsport chit chat. My name's Daniel. This is Ivan, and we'll see you next week. See you next week. Bye for now. Right before you actually leave this video, first off, give it a like and subscribe if you haven't yet. You know, you know the drill. But um, as you can see, I'm in my Udi at the moment, I'm actually from the future, um, editing this podcast thing, whatever you want to call it. Um, but before I do, um, Liam, who actually competed this weekend, asked if he could be featured in this week's recap. And uh, I was like, yeah, sure, mate. Why don't you film a mini recap based off how you went over the weekend? So uh, that's what we're going to witness now. St. John's Grammar School, Golden Eagle and High Flight. 
came 13th and 49th in S3, which is the senior school teams. They did have a bit of confusion with high fives positioning, where they thought they came third in the mixed category, but unfortunately, they were one rider down. So they didn't classify as a uh, mixed team, which is go. But Golden Eagles rider Liam Gerard overtook Pembroke Centurion on the pit straight once. With lots of yellow and red flags and a couple of ambulances crossing the track from major crashes on Crash Corner, it was a eventful race. We are both uh, sure we, all the teams are looking forward to the next race at Tail and Bend 8 hour. Oh, fancy editing. Um, but yeah, what a weekend. It was fantastic. Um, so many happy faces. It was sensational to see. I uh, just want to thank Marcus and the whole crew at Pedal Pre for having me once again as the announcer. It was fantastic. And I love everyone's feedback as well. Um, we're, we're trying our best to make it bigger and better. Um, so if you do actually have any um, ideas or things you would like to see in regards to the the event itself in terms of the media sort of thing do do shout me uh go to my instagram let's talk dot motorsport and uh send me a dm i'd love to hear your thoughts that's we want to make this sport bigger and better uh make grow it as much as we can because uh, it's a fantastic sport i love it and uh, i want to see it be even more successful than it already is so if you have any ideas let us know for sure i'd love to hear them but uh with that being said Next up is the bend, eight hour. It's gonna be epic, can't wait. 222 bikes as, as the, the yesterday me said. So uh, it's gonna be cool, looking forward to it. Um, the beginning of the year for the six hour was fantastic. So I'm looking forward to seeing what the eight hour can bring. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna go continue edit this video and uh, don't forget to leave a cheeky like and a subscribe while you're at it. Bye for now. <laughs>